Acute fractures typically present with bone marrow edema, but in the spine that's actually not always the case. In today's video I will show you a very interesting case with an acute fracture of the thoracic spine that is not presenting with bone marrow edema on MRI. And before we jump into the case, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. And there is this little bell and if you click the bell then you get an email every time I upload a new video so you don't miss any episode. This is a roughly 90 year old lady after a fall on her back or I don't remember where she fell on but uh, certainly after the fall with back pain and it was on the same day. So she came for this CT and we can immediately see here if we zoom in a little bit the few obvious findings are the wedge shaped TH12 here but that's actually uh, no sign of an acute fracture. I'm not gonna bother you with this. Then we can see there is a very extensive dish, like a diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis of the thoracic spine. And then we have this discontinuity here of the calcifications of the anterior longitudinal ligament and this dish formations. And then this kind of fracture line is also running or going here into the vertebral body, but then we somewhat lose it here on the CT and all the posterior elements here at this level are unremarkable on CT. So we don't see any fracture components back here. So this is worrying for a fracture here. And then because of the mechanism and the potential kind of chance type of fracture, um, they did a CT or rather a MR as well. So just a quick Patreon update. I would like to thank my newest patrons that joined me over the last couple of weeks and that's Robert, Leszczak, Brian, Massimo, Tillman, Paula and some Russian dude. Thank you very much for your support and also thanks to all the other 70 patrons that are still continuing my channel. It's really amazing uh, the support that I get for the videos I do. And if you've been following me for some time, why not consider becoming a patron yourself? If you want to know more about Patreon, go check the link here down below or in the description down below. And if you have any questions, just write me an email. So this was kind of a shortened pro uh, protocol with only like three sequences, no transfer sections. And so if you look at this kind of stir sequence here, you see there is not a lot of bone marrow edema. We have very subtle changes like here at the level of TH8 and TH9, but certainly nothing going on at TH12, which was an old fracture anyway, so I'm not focusing on that. But let's zoom in a little bit at the level of interest. So we can see here the discontinuity of these calcified dish formations here with some fluid here in this little gap. Then we have very little bone marrow edema here and it's somewhat out of proportion from what you would expect in an acute spinal fracture or vertebral body fracture if you compare this to your standard osteoporotic uh, compression fractures where you have very extensive bone marrow edema and so or even after this traumatic uh, compression fractures in young people after car accidents etc etc so it seems kind of out of proportion and then we have some little uh, edema down here also at, at first glance if you just scroll through you think okay what's that maybe this is maybe just some kind of schmorls node with some kind of changes there so you could easily go and or forego this and not call this in fracture especially if you wouldn't have had the CT scan now I think there's one clue also here on this T1 sequence where you can see, especially here at this vertebral body, this is TH9, there is kind of a linear change within the vertebral body like this. So it's really very, very subtle and it's not the typical fracture. We don't lose any height uh, at all and we don't have an epidural hematoma. We don't really have a lot of paravertebral edema, so there's just this tiny amount of fluid here at the level where the dish formations broke. So this is very interesting, but actually what's, what's really the case is that this is a acute fracture and the MR, I think it was one day after the CT. So the fracture line goes along this way kind of thing. So that was how the forces went through the spine and then somewhat they got lost here because we don't see any uh, ligamentous or bony injuries in the posterior or posterior ligament complex or osseous structures here as well. So it's really just these very subtle findings here and for an acute fracture it really seems out of proportion at first glance. 
So because I have seen such a case before, then I remembered uh, that there was actually a study about this. And this is actually this study here where they looked at the bone marrow edema variability in acute spinal fractures. And it's actually a nice study. So the presence of bone marrow edema is typically the feature we use to assess the age of any kind of fracture as we all learn during our training. But they hypothesized that a fracture is only really showing bone marrow edema if it's actually a compression type of fracture and other types of fractures do not necessarily always show bone marrow edema. And what they did, they looked at a large sample of patients with acute fractures on CT that then had a subsequent MRI within 48 hours. So our patient would fall into this category. They actually had roughly 190 patients with some, some of them with multiple fractures and of the complete 288 acute fractures, 94 of these fractures did not generate bone marrow edema on MRI. So this is very interesting. It's close to one third of all fractures did not present with bone marrow edema. And there was obviously this kind of difference where bone marrow edema was acute with vertebral body compression fractures, whereas with other type of fraction, uh, fractures such as distraction fractures, it was less likely. Now the conclusion, we can jump right into the conclusion that there, that there is variability in the presence and the degree of bone marrow edema and only vertebral body compression reliably generated bone marrow edema and other type of fractures can lead to false negative MRI and awareness of this, of this finding. So you need to know this basically. So you need to have seen at least one case or now watching this video. So you can go in the future. Once you see this, you should be safe now. But let's have a look at the image here uh, from this study and you can see here and that's exactly like a case that I've seen a few years ago. There is an acute fracture of the dense here at the base. You can see the fracture here clearly. And on the MR there is absolutely no bone marrow edema. We only have the indirect signs with all this prevertebral hematoma which is more extensive here than in our case. But in the bone you don't see bone marrow edema, which is quite surprising. So if you only have this MR, you might get confused with what's going on. So you certainly need the information of uh, trauma and you have to have the CT in correlation. So unfortunately, they don't show a T1 sequence, which uh, might pick out the fracture line a little bit better. And here you can see these chance fractures where the fracture goes through the vertebral body all the way, classical finding on CT here, but on MRI, there is not really a lot of bone marrow edema going on. So this is very, very interesting. So if she's falling on her back like this, boink, then the forces will lead to some kind of a hyperextension or extension here of the kyphosis of the vertebral uh, of the spine here at the thoracic level. So it will go down here and maybe there and you have this kind of force transmission through this column here of this anterior and middle column here. So the interpretation basically is that if you have a compression type of fracture that the trabecular structure basically gets crushed and that crushing of multiple trabecles basically leads to bleeding into the bone marrow and you're more likely to see this as a bone marrow edema on MRI. Whereas if you have some kind of a distraction you're just ripping apart let's say, or it's, that's my understanding, way fewer trabecula and therefore the amount of bleeding inside the bone is much less uh, prominent than with this kind of impaction or compression fractures. Yeah. Going back to edit the video now. So let's quickly go back to the initial CT because I forgot to show you something. It's important that you don't just look at the bone window if you assess these kind of images, but really also look at the soft tissue window because you can get some valuable insights here. So what we can see here now is obviously the fracture, but you can see where we had this little bit of bone marrow edema in TH9 that there is a little bit more density in the bone marrow there, like exactly where the bone marrow edema was on MR. And this is actually a sign of uh, a vertebral fracture and this is not just in this type of fractures the case but also in compression fractures if you see the fatty marrow in the other vertebral body and bodies and you have one that is a little bit more dense this can be in sign of a fracture of that body.
So this case was very interesting and I think it's an important case because once you see this and once you know that actually fractures on MRI in the spine do not necessarily always have to present with pulmonary edema, then you will never forget this for the rest of your life. And next time you see something like this, you will remember this video, hopefully, and also that there is actually a publication that uh, has looked at this topic, which is always very important. Yes, I think that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and see you next time.